Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the June 7th Webster Board of Education business meeting. Um, could I have a motion, please, to move into executive session? So moved. Janice, second by Maria. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. We will be back shortly. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the June 7th Board of Education business meeting. Would everyone please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and can we yeah. have a motion, please, to move out of executive session? Janice, second by Mike. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We are moving right into our liaison reports. If students would like to come forward and join us. It's a little bit different. A lot of different environments this year, and we appreciate that you're adapting to all of them. We're so nice and close. I know. This is great. Close and comfy. Yes. All right. So, hello, everyone. Hi, Lauren. And I just want to say thank you guys for listening to all of us speak throughout this entire school year. It's been really cool, and I could hopefully I continue to do this next year. So, um, yeah. And now getting into our reports. Congratulations to all of our seniors this year. Um, they recently just had their luminary walk where they also received their yard signs, and I heard it was a blast from some of what I've heard from some of my friends. And um, also, our school just had their first trade and job fair, which was really exciting, and it gave the um, opportunity to many students to have an option and look at um, different routes and careers of life, and it was really cool. I got to check it out for about 15 minutes, and I went back to classes per usual. <laughs> and um, next, our school, we actually implemented Sources of Strength, and we had a Sources of Strength week where we um, had students completing a bunch of different challenges that implemented the, sh the sources of physical health, um, spirituality, family and friend support, and much, much more. And the people that actually, with their groups, had gotten the most points, or the uh, class, or the group that was voted for the most and did all the challenges completely, um, they actually got to enter into the, chi the Titan Chase, which was a race where you had to complete a bunch of different challenges in over and under 25 minutes. And I actually got a bunch of footage from that, and it was really funny. <laughs> but it was so cool, and I hopefully I can be like the pep coach, whatever you want to call it, for next year, so. <laughs> um, and um, with Miss Prindle's group called Titan Scholars, we had a garden cleanup with Inner City, and unfortunately I wasn't able to go, but I, it was really awesome. And also, um, our Titans had won sectionals at, for baseball, so that was also really cool. So and I got to sing the national anthem there, so it was even cooler. <laughs> And yeah, it was cool. You would like to go? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, our students are preparing for finals this week. Um, unfortunately, our History of Regents test has been canceled because of the devastatingly tragic Buffalo shooting. The Black and Brown Student Union of Webster Thomas is actively encouraging students to donate and collect food items for the families who live in the area. Um, that have been affected by this act of violence. That area is now a food desert, and the students at Thomas are doing what they can to help. Um, speaking of helping, a few of the students have organized a walkout uh, last week, mm -hmm. and it was very successful. Many students walked out. It was a mob of people. Um, we walked. We walked out against gun violence mm -hmm. um, for on our Publishers schools. Parkway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was really important because um, I felt that a lot of students were in the same mindset where they were kind of just sick and tired of seeing 
the same thing over and over and over again. And we saw it in Florida. We saw it literally everywhere. And it's getting, if I, if I can say this, it's getting to the point where I'm about sick of it and having to see it in um, schools where even some of my cousins live close by to out in Florida where I have a lot of my dad's family in it. And it scares me because if we're not doing anything to change this, it's just gonna be something normalized and violence in our schools should not be normalized. So I'm thankful that we did have that walkout. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. Thank you guys for listening to us. Thank you. Throughout this year. I'm gonna close that. All right. <laughs> All right, there we go. We good? All right. Good evening, everyone. So we hope you're all ready for summer. Obviously, we all are, and we're super excited. Um, the end of the year has been filled with so many exciting events, and we can't wait to share them all with you. So we recently had quite a few concerts at Schrader, uh, and our musicians are thrilled to be back in person with no masks, and we're able to you know, get back to full concerts with full orchestra. I know personally I'm in Philharmonic Orchestra, and we got to have our full band with us, so that was very nice. Uh, and then on Saturday, June 4th, our juniors had their prom uh, at the Memorial Art Gallery. And the theme was Masquerade. Juniors had a great time with their friends, and it was certainly a night to remember. And then likewise, on Saturday, May 21st, us seniors had our senior ball at Casa Larga. And it was very nice. Seniors were served dinner and desserts. And it was another night filled with lots of dancing and just as many laughs. So for freshmen, sophomore, junior, and senior award ceremonies, we've had those at Schrader over the past couple of weeks. And at both the junior and senior award ceremonies, we handed out scholarships to people who were interested in certain colleges. So uh, the senior award night also hosted the opportunity to present our 2022 Seal of Literacy recipients uh, with their medals. Uh, which we're going to actually talk about a bit later. Uh, so a special congratulations to all uh, our students for their hard work and accomplishments. So then on Thursday, June 2nd, uh, Webster Schrader High School had uh, a mock DWI crash. And this served as an opportunity to remind students of safe driving practices, especially as we're uh, approaching the summer months. And thank you so much to the police department, fire departments, EMS workers, and everyone else who uh, made it possible. And also, Officer Hurley, I don't know if you're in the audience right now, but thank you especially to him uh, for kind of running the whole thing and talking us through it. And then finally, from Mr. Lasky, uh, our transportation system students went on their annual field trip to uh, Williamson Sotus Airport, and they actually got to fly in a plane with Mr. Lasky, which is always a highlight for the class. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Brooke. Hi. Oh. On Thursday, May 26, Schrader celebrated our summa cum laude breakfast. Students who earned the academic honor um, have maintained an overall GPA of 95.0 and above, as well as taking three AP classes throughout high school. Over 40 students earned this incredible achievement this year. Congratulations to all summa recipients. Your academic achievement is very impressive. A story from Mr. Fedor, one of our science teachers. Um, he talks about how for extra credit, he allowed his students to take a selfie with the recent total lunar eclipse and send it to him. He made a collage, which turned out very cool. And the students recently brought in a bunch of clothing and food items for displaced Ukrainian families because they're, quote, awesome. Um, he now has a bag of five items to donate due to their generosity. On Wednesday, June 8th, tomorrow, our seniors will be embarking on their senior trip. They'll, before they head out, they will have a senior breakfast and the trip will um, be taking place over the next couple days at a campsite. A story from Ms. Jockerman, one of our amazing math teachers at Schrader, specifically with her AP stat students, which included myself. We had a project called You Are the Expert. This is a new project, and essentially we had to prepare a 15-minute presentation on a topic of our choice where we were the expert, and there were specific parameters. We had to keep the audience engaged, and it had to be 15 minutes, so take up a good chunk of time. Some specific presentations included how to play for square, making balloon animals, tip for online shopping, which was very helpful, <laughs> instant pot mac and cheese, braiding, how to skin a chicken, how to life, and origami, just to name a few. 
Um, <laughs> the art department would like to invite you all to open studio night. This event takes place on June 16th from 5.30 p.m. to 7. This is the first year of many to come at Schrader where students will have a final end of the year art show. Come bring the family and tour the art rooms which will be showcasing amazing student artwork. Unified basketball. This year we had an incredible unified basketball team. We had more than 50 students of all abilities participate in this inclusive sport. At the end of the year, students had a special game where they got to honor staff who have supported them. And as mentioned, on Sunday, May 15th, Schrader, Thomas, and the PTSA came together to host the Senior Luminary Walk. Students walked the lighted pathway around the Parks and Recreation, and students had the opportunity to pick up their yard sign, and there was amazing dessert trucks there. Thank you to all who helped out and made this event possible. In conclusion, we wanted to take some time to thank the people who have impacted our time at Schrader. First of all, thank you all to the Board of Education and to Mr. Neenan for letting us share our experiences from school. You've been very kind to us and we've really enjoyed this opportunity. Thank you to Ms. Bardanis for making us feel so welcome when we started attending in-person meetings. We always look forward to your smiling face. <laughs> um, Thank you to our wonderful student council advisors, Ms. Jockman and Mr. Peck. Michael and I got to serve on the student council for four years, and for the last two years, we were president and vice president, which was so much fun. Thank you to Ms. Dinsmore for helping us with our reports and always including our, her smiling face little emojis at the end of the emails. <laughs> Thank you to Mr. Benz for selecting us to be liaisons together. We've been close friends since we were young, and this was an amazing opportunity together. And I'll pass it back over to Michael. <laughs> So, ironically, we will both be ten, uh, attending schools in the Rochester area next year. I'll personally be studying political science at the University of Rochester, and Brooke will be attending St. John Fisher, where she'll be uh, studying marketing. And together, we both attended Plank North Elementary, Spry Middle School, and then obviously Schrader High School. Uh, both of us are so grateful for our time in, here in Webster, and we know that the experiences we've had will absolutely shape our future. So our teachers and leaders have prepared us to go out and face the world, and thank you to all of you. You've had such a tremendous impact on us. Uh, but that being said, we are going to be back up here in about 20 minutes to talk about the seal. Uh, so we're not out of your hair quite yet, but... You know, th thank you all so much for the opportunity, really. Thank you. We have enjoyed each and every one of you, and thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy lives, um, given all your achievements and everything that you're headed toward, to take time to be here with us and to share with everyone all that's going on in the schools. We appreciate also the fact that you use student voice in a way that was organized and supported by administration and security to do something really important. Um, Brooke and Michael, knowing that you're graduating, we do have a special token of appreciation for both of you. Oh, thank yeah. you so yeah. much. Yeah, join you. And, and, and maybe we need to start something new. If they're both going to school in Rochester, maybe they can come back and do like an oh, alumni yeah, or not, something. Maybe. Okay, course. that sounds good. You don't say. And an we alumni. Also want to Go ahead. Yeah, and we also want to say th to, to Lauren and Charisma, thank you guys also for doing everything you've done this year, and we look forward to seeing you guys again next year. So thank you all. Thank you. Welcome, Joan. Okay. A lot of people. All right, we'll put that there. And I did promise Ridiculous Riders. It is awesome. If you get your hats on it, the Clem North uh, 10th grade, 5th grade writers, it's outstanding. And it's from all different writers uh, and elementary schools from around New York State. So it's fun. There's some from Long Island. <laughs> we'll read those stories differently. <laughs>
Just a little. <laughs> Cream cheese, pizza, pie. All right. Hello, you guys. Student liaisons are just. We got to switch up the order next year. I'm back. I'm <laughs> just got to switch up the order. I'm first in the alphabet. All right. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. And I can't believe it's June. This is awesome. We're still, we're in person. We're back in person. We're up on stage. We're close. <laughs> um, when I seek data from my colleagues, WTA members, it constantly comes in the form of students. The students did this, the students said that, and the different stories. So I will continue to start with that, but then I am going to talk about some of the other members and what they have been up to. Is that better? OK. May was Mental Health Awareness Month, and as you guys know, the Sources of Strength has been reactivated this year. And it was awesome to have just a little touch on all the things that we have been teaching, we have been doing. It is the whipped cream and the cherry that goes on top because every single month we are teaching something with mindfulness, integrating those pieces of helping kids get through life because it isn't easy and we all know that. Um, and you do need to celebrate the joy. We all know that importance. Our focus throughout every month is stress the importance of taking care of our own mental health and creating an environment that shows the awareness and value in each and every one of us. Our care rooms were relaxing Zen rooms as the month went on, and the mindful minutes were at the start of each and every period. At our elementary schools, field trips, flag days, concerts, they're in full bloom, sometimes multiple times in one week in one building. Middle schools, constant inquiry-based training and learning going on. Students are demonstrating the size of various angle measurements with their hands, with their friends, with their buddies, trying to figure out which, can, which lengths create triangles and which angles create triangles and really doing some hands-on learning with some of the math facts that we all need to know. Our sixth grade scientists across the district have been learning about electrical circuits and magnets. Daily hands-on opportunities allow students to wonder, investigate, and explore how energy is transformed in real life situations. We have that light bulb moment, and as students make connections while collaborating with their classmates, students will be investigating the invisible magnetic fields in the magnets. I think you're gonna have an invite to that too and they'll be applying their knowledge of the circuits and magnetism to build a test, to test electromagnetic. Read 180 continues to be in bloom in Ocean Inquiry. The class is working together to in answer inquiry questions that they bring about and to address the pollution and what they can do about the pollution in oceans. Their storyboarding helps provide those visuals that we all learn by no matter what age. And yes, even field trips are back at the elementary school, high schools too. <laughs> um, they went to the Rochester Art Museum. They couldn't get enough of it. Mesopotamia, Egypt, China, Greece, Rome, and the Middle Ages. Students were led around and asked questions about different pieces, and they were all excited to be out and in the environment. Merging social media with digital and with good old-fashioned hardcore magazine covers. Students are stretching their database skills in short projects, highlighting contemporary leaders, and they're dipping their toes into journalism and creating covers to highlight their knowledge. At the high school, Thursday night, uh, the neighbors, the party, the will, the heirloom, and the ghost will make an inaugural performance. Our high school students wrote short stories that are also being put out and read why our geotech built the stage for those students to be acting out those stories. And the mouse. I did not want to forget about the mouse. That will be Thursday and Friday. Continuing moving out of the classroom, because we know learning takes no boundaries, the trade fair. Over 50 businesses came in for hours. Students were in the field house. They had the opportunity to explore. They went down during study halls. They went down during lunches. They applied for jobs, Wickham Farms, Staples, Wegmans, uh, Abbott's. So many different people were there. The airport was there. That was a cool stand. Car show. It's so cool to see students who just are quiet. 
and you know, all of a sudden a different car pulls in or someone has, you know, in the back of a convertible Mustang, a car seat. <laughs> it's always fun. And the different interest levels and grandpas there with their dads and students who rebuilt cars with going through their generations. It's a nice touch to have. And it was a great parking lot to have it in. Our adaptive phys ed teachers, they went to a conference at the state level and they actually gave one of the, they weren't keynote speaker, they won the breakout. Well, that was back in November, but they were so impressive that people from Corning came up. They traveled an hour and 45 minutes for the adaptive physical education program and learn what we do here in Webster. They traveled between buildings. They had long conversation. They ended up here at Clem North. And when they went back, they were saying their brains were buzzing with what we are doing as an APE phys ed department. Alternative education programs, they're planning their end of year celebrations on a smaller level with family picnics and smaller graduations. Those are taking place this week and next week as well. From our chairs, Dina Malbouf, she continues to plan two to three things a week between the retirees, which God bless them, and our um, 50 year anniversary and the fact that we haven't been able to get together as a larger group. So now we have been and each time there's something planned, there's like 20, 30, 40 more people and that keeping that closeness and that connectiveness to, um, you see the difference, you see the difference between people who have been around two, three people at home and the difference between people who have been able to be out and around more. Our EDI, Candace Lucas, reports that that training continues this summer on level two and level three, level two in July and level three in August. There will be WTA members attending those conferences along with our collaborative staff. PTSA, can't say enough. The Luminary Walk, I'm sure everybody grabbed some of those pictures from my websites. Uh, Linda Law, Denise Warren, Craig Johnville, the parents, PTSA. That is one beautiful walk, and to take a moment and be in that moment. All right, summer learning recovery, we're looking forward to our students staying in Webster again. Our WTA has teachers who applied that are going to work with our students so we can stay here in Webster to help them earn and achieve and learn throughout the summer. Our commitment to protecting our students it's unwavering, and to hear our liaisons say it, and I'm glad they did, that we all need to do something, whether it's marching down and just being able to talk about it. And when you're in a school, kids will bring it up. Kids need to talk, they need to say, and they need, others need quiet. And we are providing that in Webster, as well as trying to all help each other through it. Happy Father's Day to all of you who are fathers, and we wish you all health, joy, and peace. Thank you so Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Joni. The entire year being here updating us and sharing all this good news, and I hope you have a restful and wonderful summer. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. <laughs> Knowing you, yeah, that's right. That's right. It'll be busy. And moving on to our instructional reports, uh, we have the superintendent's yeah, report. Yeah, thank you. And I'll start, but if uh, Francine and Brian, if you guys want to come on up and join, but I'll be starting to read here. Uh, all right, since this is our last regular Board of Education meeting prior to graduation, uh, for our Webster Schrader, Webster Thomas, and our Goal seniors, I'd like to begin my report with a salute to our outstanding class of 2022. Schrader, Thomas, and Goal seniors, our entire district is so proud of all that you have accomplished during your time with us here in our district. We wish you all the best as you approach such an important event in your lives, and we look forward to celebrating uh, with the goal on June 15th. That's next week, believe it or not. Um, and then Webster Schrader is two weeks from tonight on June 21st. And then Webster Thomas on Friday, June 24th. All Webster CSD families will receive a community newsletter this week with more information on graduation ceremonies. Class of 2022, thank you for all you have added to our One Webster community. More to come when we get to graduations, so that's exciting. 
Uh, the end of the year is always an exciting time, and I have several highlights. Some of you heard, a couple of them you heard from our liaisons, uh, our student liaisons, but I want to definitely highlight a few things that have happened here in the last uh, few weeks. First, six Schrader speakers and debaters competed over Memorial Day weekend in a national speech and debate team tournament held in Washington, D.C. Close to 3,000 students compete <laughs> and 2,000 coaches and judges and uh, coach at the tournament each year. For all but one team member, this was our students' first trip to nationals. Webster has qualified students every year since 1985. Again, another accomplishment. And I know we have a couple of them that are actually out there in the audience right now. So again, congratulations to all of you. We had one senior, Ad H, was one point away from breaking out of the preliminary rounds into final examination. So congratulations to Ad H and all of the team for your accomplishments. Next shout out is uh, a shout out for our, our outstanding YEA or Young Entrepreneurs Academy participant. Schrader senior Josh M won our local tournament in Webster, went on to win regionals, and was one of six at the national level, which is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Josh was amazing throughout the whole thing. He did not win first place, but gosh, we are so proud of him the other day. And I said, hey, you were in the top six. And he goes, hey, I could have been four because they gave out prizes for one, two, three. And he goes, hey, I might have been four. I loved his attitude. It was just so great. And he was, he was so dynamic. So super proud of him. Um, by the way, his business was, is named On Call. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Um, I'd also like to, to share how impressed I was by uh, one of our student liaison. I think she might have left, but but Lauren, you, you mentioned it in your report, but Lauren W., her rendition of the national anthem at um, Frontier Fear Field during the Thomas Schrader finals, it, 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 I told her parent, or her mom who was there, and her after, it sent shivers down my spine the whole entire time she was singing. It was just so great to watch her in that audience. It was like a big stage for her, and I know she did a, she did a great job, but she loved it, too. You could just tell she was enjoying it. So thanks for uh, doing that for us, Lauren, and honoring uh, our country with your talent. Uh, next up, um, let's see. I think those were them. Yeah. Uh, nope. Like there's, no, that's what comes over here. Sorry, <laughs> wrong page. Uh, that leads me to the exciting news upon uh, that, again, going back to some of our athletic accomplishments here in the last few, few weeks. Uh, we, as I just mentioned, boys baseball was the sectional final versus Thomas and Schrader, and so was softball this year, which meant that those of us that were there, we had to sit in the middle. <laughs> it was not easy, but we all <laughs> sat in the middle. Um, and congratulations to uh, Schrader softball first for a back-to-back, -back, first back-to-back -back -back win um, actually, I can't say that. I don't know if it was the first back-to-back -back win in sectional, of sectionals in their history. I know it was for boys baseball and Thomas. But again, they both won back-to-back -back titles, which is fantastic. Schrader softball is going on this weekend on Saturday and will be at uh, States in Long Island. And uh, good luck to them. And I also want to give a shout-out to Sean Stregge. Sean Stregge has been on the phone, I think, for the last 48 hours trying to help make this all happen, and it has not been easy, and I really appreciate the work he's doing for that. Another note, Webster Thomas track and field boys team won uh, sectionals for the first time in school history since they've been Thomas since 2000 and since the school started in 2001. So, and... Um, Congratulations to them. Also, four Thomas Track members, Tom, Connor T, Eric S, Evan L, and Skyler K won or placed second in the state qualifier meet this past Friday, and we'll head to states this weekend. Also heading to state competition this weekend, our Schrader Track and Field state qualifiers, Cameron C, uh, Corinthia G, Jordan S, and Allison F. And we also want to mention our one Webster golfer, Mackenzie D, who participated in the state tournament this past weekend. And although she didn't win it, she did fantastic. Uh, and so again, congratulations to all of our spring sports student athletes and all of their accomplishments. It was a, another great spring for Thomas and Schrader and for Webster. So, which now leads me to our guests that we have here for Campus News that are gonna share a few more things with us. So I am gonna now turn it over and it's my honor to turn it over to Francine Leggett, principal at Schlegel Elementary and Brian Powers, our principal at Willink, that will speak to us about elementary and secondary happenings. Thank you very much. It's quite cozy up here. All right, so some elementary excitement that I'd like to share on behalf of all seven elementary schools. We've had a very busy May-June. 
Um, and so each, we have a, I have a slide this time for each school. I didn't want to go too long. But in each slide, there's different pictures that really a lot of these things are happening across all seven buildings. So for DeWitt, um, the slide, we have um, showcased the fourth and fifth grade concerts. Everyone was beyond excited to get back to the concerts. It was um, the first concert in a few years now. So it was, it was really invigorating to have the students performing for all of us. Um, the parents loved it. And they sounded really good across all seven um, schools. DeWitt also had the, uh, the support of the missing and exploited children riders. Um, so they came through. And I know the schools, we all take turns doing that each year. And then the UPK, our little guys, released some butterflies. Um, and so it was quite a joyful moment for all of them. At Clem North, um, there was a star sprint, and they raised over $22,000. Uh, the principals spent some time on the roof and ended up getting slimed as well. So, you know, good for them. I don't, th I don't really want to get slimed ever. I'm hoping that doesn't <laughs> happen to me someday. Uh, so Clem South, there was a really cool assembly. The BMX riders um, were over there. And then fifth graders across the district, they went over to Challenger. Um, Flag Day's coming up, so we're all looking forward to those events. And then across all seven buildings, uh, the kindergarten students are celebrating those last days um, with the ABC countdown, which is quite a hit for our, our young learners. Plank North, highlighting just the bingo for books. This is a big hit um, in many of our uh, elementary schools. The kids just love coming and earning books, and everyone leaves with at least one book. So they got to do it outside, and they had a lot of fun. Plank South is celebrating their new library. Uh, as everyone knows, we have all the libraries being put in. Schlegel's just about to start, so we're getting ready, gearing up for Monday's construction. And so Plank South is really enjoying their space. Uh, the science fair was also something that they participated in. And then they had a spring staff breakfast, which uh, they actually invited back some retirees. So in that photo, you might see some familiar faces from um, years previous. And then they celebrated the Health Moves Mind event. And so um, just really practicing those healthy habits you know, amongst all seven elementary schools. State Road had a um, artist, Cal Rubright, and he taught the students how to uh, paint, illustrate on their sidewalk um, using different languages to welcome people to State Road. So a lot of the staff helped um, you know, organize that and facilitate that experience for the students, and they had a lot of fun. And then last, uh, Schlegel Road, we had our UPK Marathon, which I, again, you know, all the schools participated in that. The kindergarten uh, rhyming celebration, we actually, remember that pavilion, the shade structure we've been talking about for years? It's up and it's being used. So the kids went out there and were able to perform for their families um, each class. And then our first graders went off to the zoo. I was hoping my day was free so I could have joined them because I really want to see that giraffe. But they did report back. Some of the classes got to see the, the new giraffe. And then these are some pictures of just illustrating how we are crew at Schlegel. And so under um, MTSS, when we talk about PBIS and then CARE, you know, the mantra this year um, was we are crew, just really building the leadership and students and amongst our staff. And so some um, just great pictures of all the great things that have been happening with around that mantra. And then finally, uh, just thank you. Thank you for supporting us all year. Um, we we're so happy to be back in person, happy to have everyone. I'm coming to visit us and seeing us, and I'm looking forward to summer, but then also September as well. So thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. Ryan goes, I just would say that the day that we came to visit was yes. the UPK Marathon. Yes. And so it was really fun to kind of look out and say, when you think marathon, you think a long distance. But remember, these are our UPKers. Mm -hmm. So it was like about from here to the back wall and back. But it was good. It was really good. It was, it was fast. so, so cute. I know. And it was oh, a little hot, yeah, too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what you yeah, were contesting. Yeah, yeah. It was really fun. With. Yeah, thank so, you. Thanks, Francine. Thank you. So, Francine, I was thinking between um, being slimed and BMX uh -huh. ramp over your head, you yeah. have things that you could potentially look forward to as principal. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, and we have, so we're preparing. Our uh, fun run is on June 14th. So tomorrow, I'll tell you the secret, Mrs. Hessel and I have to dress up. And so we're going to go full formal dress up as because so many people registered. 
So, so far, it's not so bad what we have to do. But I kind of think that as we get closer to June 14th, there's going to be some other things that we need to do that <laughs> might be a little bit out of our comfort zone. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so if you guys would like me to come visit you on one of those days, I would be more than happy to do that. <laughs> but, you know, the kids love it, and we do it for the kids. Um, you know, and, and the families are participating, so it's really a great event. And it's a great way for, um, for PTSA to have some fundraiser. Um, fundraising experiences going on that really embody everyone in the school, so it's a lot of fun. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. If you don't mind clicking for me, I'll just look over your shoulder a little bit. But um, our secondary campus news, uh, we've, we've heard a lot of it from our high schools in particular, um, and I'm sure um, as with our elementary bu buildings, there's just so much going on and so much to celebrate. Um, that we can't capture it all, but but it was great to hear so many, and, and I'll, I'll share some new. And I, I, just, I know um, I can speak to our teachers and to our PTSA and our parents that people just dove in this spring and put events on the calendar and uh, it just really maximized every every day we've had, and it's been uh, it's just been it's been wonderful. So um, again, uh, from the halls of Thomas, um, as we heard, um, boys baseball and track with sectional titles. Um, Mr. Weedor shares that graduation, prom, ball, senior trip, and much, much more. Actually, I think they're just back from their senior trip. Um, but much going on, uh, including uh, our senior parade um, for all of our schools, um, I believe, is on Monday. So we're looking forward, uh, looking forward to see our graduates march through the halls of all of, all of their former buildings. Mm -hmm. And again, um, congrats again to uh, Schrader Girls Softball, uh, sectional regional champs. Good luck down in Long Island. And... Um, Again, a Trader Award Ceremonies, uh, Speech and Debate Nationals, YEA National Finalist, uh, Concerts, um, New Staff, um, and uh, coming up their Senior Trip, Senior Parade, Graduation. So in addition to what we've heard, just many, many exciting things going on at both of our high schools. Um, as with our middle schools, uh, and just included a few pictures for Willink of our eighth grade Niagara Falls trip, which we, we took last week, last Tuesday, um, and uh, had our eighth graders uh, go through the Maid of the Mist, Cave of the Winds, um, and a uh, trip to the Buffalo Zoo as well. But I know for a lot of the adults, we hadn't been on these things since we were kids, and uh, the fear factor raises a little bit uh, when, you're, <laughs> when you're not looking through a child's eyes. So uh, it was a gut check for a lot of us, uh, maybe myself included, but it was a beautiful day. Uh, for Willink Spry, uh, same trip uh, a day later. Um, and again, at Willink, we have our final concert tonight, so I'm looking forward to seeing that after. Um, and uh, awards nights, and again, a, uh, a special 20 plus years celebration for Willink, which we're gonna kick off on Flag Day next week um, in celebration of the 20 years. Um, and then some that Willink has been uh, one of our middle schools. So we're looking forward, very much looking forward to that. Um, and again, at Spry, uh, same awesome trip um, to Niagara Falls a day later. I think we lucked out with a little bit better weather, but uh, both, both trips were a success. Um, and they also shared some pictures of their Unified Basketball League um, and games that took place uh, this spring. Eighth grade semifinals, uh, merit celebrations, concerts, um, spirit weeks, uh, charity kickball tournament again. And, and the fun just continues over these, these uh, final few days. Um, and I know... Um, at OWL, our OWL programs very tied up in, in some of the building-wide end-of-year celebrations, and I can speak to OWL Middle um, that they're celebrating one of the best ways, which is with food. Um, <laughs> and a lot of students are getting to, uh, to voice their choice and, and uh, some great recipes coming out. I've tried some myself and have been very fortunate to, uh, to partake. Um, and finally, I believe um, at Goal, like our high schools, so much going on, some great pictures from prom. Um, and uh, if you just click to one more slide, also um, some uh, career days at Frontier Field and uh, Board of Ed workshop, uh, Bryant and Stratton MCC visits, and uh, many more slides. Uh, if, if interested, you can click through. But again, to, to summarize, just so, so many wonderful things going on that our students are, um, are a part of, um, or in many cases leading, and I just want to thank them, our parents and our faculty and our PTSA for, for, uh, for putting together just an amazing spring. Thank you. Thank you both. We appreciate so much, given everything that's going on, especially if you're headed to a concert as soon as you leave here, <laughs> that you dedicate so much time to keeping us informed. It's much appreciated. And I want to say thank you to the both of you as well. Um, not only once did you guys both get to present twice as you've been part of our co-directors, so that, thank you for doing that. I also just want to recognize all of our uh, 
principals and administrators that have presented this year during Campus News. It's been a, a new addition, you know, from, from all of us here, and I think it's been a wonderful addition. I appreciate the, the time that you put into that and the energy that you bring with it. So I just want to say thank you for that. One last thing for me, uh, I'd like to invite the community to the Webster Drama Club's production of The Neighbors. We heard that a little bit earlier. It's called The, the Neighbors, and it's coming up later this week. It's Thursday and Friday. Uh, and it's a collection of short one-act plays, all written by Thomas students. The five plays will be performed at 7.30 p.m. this Thursday and Friday. And what makes these performances even more special is that they will, be, they will have inaugural performances on the new Thomas Courtyard stage. So it's at Thomas on the stage in the courtyard. Again, special about that stage is that the stage was actually constructed by our geotech students, so which is really neat. So. Uh, tickets, can, excuse me, tickets can be purchased on the website if, um, that you see on our screen. There it is, right there. And if you want to take a picture of, down in the QR code, you can. But that ends my report. And again, thank you guys very much. Thanks for having thank us. You. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Enjoy the concert. Thank you. Yeah. And next we have the Seal of Biliteracy Report. We'd like to welcome Dr. McCarthy, along with some students who will be joining him. And Ms. Hall, Leslie Hall. Yep, that's and Ms. Hall. Yep. Thank you, welcome. Good evening. And I'm gonna just speak just for a moment and I'm gonna step away because we have three students and I wanna make sure it's about them uh, so they can all get a, get a seat. Uh, we'll get one more chair, we get we'll get one more chair. All right, we'll, we'll need one more chair. Um, so thank you uh, for this opportunity to share about the Seal of Biliteracy and the incredible achievements of our students uh, over the last, uh, for some of them, their lifetimes speaking this language and engaging in language and others since uh, seventh grade, uh, in particular during the time of a pandemic. And um, before we get into, and I turn it over to Ms. Hall, I do wanna recognize Ms. Mrs. Hall for her incredible, incredible efforts. Uh, this doesn't happen without her, and certainly with lots of teachers and community members, but the driving force behind all of this and the reason why we've had over 200 students honored in the last four years is because of her. So I just wanna make sure I share that for the board and for the entire Webster community. So thank you for all of your efforts. That's it. So I'm gonna step away and turn it over to the real stars. Hello, my name is Leslie Hall. And I'm here with these wonderful students who represent some of our students who earned the seal of biliteracy this year, which was an incredible feat, especially with the pandemic. Um, so I have a slideshow. Here's all our greetings. So I am so proud to represent the World Language Department this year and tell you a little bit about the seal of biliteracy program. Um, and these wonderful students who have successfully earned the seal, which is a seal from the New York State um, Board of Ed, or Board of the, the New, New York State, State Board of Regents. Yes, the there Board of Regents, whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah. You guys are the Board of Ed. This is the board of Ed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so the Seal of Biliteracy is a program from New York State that recognizes students who have excelled in their language skills in both English and another world language, and in some cases, more than one world language. Students who successfully complete the requirements for the SEAL earn a SEAL for their diploma, which is a stamp that goes on their diploma, and a medal like Brooke has <laughs> that they get to wear at graduation, as well as the backing to write on the resume not only that I can speak this language, but they have the backing from New York State that it indeed shows that they've reached a level of intermediate high. An intermediate high comes from the ACTFL guidelines, and I won't go into details, but it shows that pretty much you have effective communication skills in reading, listening, speaking, and writing um, in the language. And it's not only in the world language, but it's in English as well. So our ENL students have to go through a lot to prove their English skills as well. For this, they have to earn three points according to the English criteria, and then they also have to earn three points according to the world language um, criteria. And a lot of times, if our students don't take AP English, they end up having to do two uh, presentations to a panel, one in English and then one in the world language as well. So they have to do quite a bit of work. Um, our students who are not enrolled in a Checkpoint C class like Spanish, French, and German, also in addition to doing a portfolio and a presentation, they also have to take a Checkpoint C exam. 
um, which again, test them on reading, speaking, listening, and writing. So they're really tested and they're put through the ringer with their skills. All of our students have to complete a project portfolio and presentation to a panel. And this project is pretty lengthy. Um, they have to analyze three sources, two texts and one audio source, and fill out interpretive guides, proving their <coughs> interpretive skills. They have to have a writing piece. And the writing piece has to be organized. It has to have elaboration. It has to have a variety of vocab and grammar. So it can't just be communicating in simple context. They have to really show and prove their skills. And they also have to vary grammar at a higher level, um, which is pretty demanding as well. And then they get to take all of that and they get in front of a panel of people who speak the language. They give a presentation and then they're turned over to an interrogation <laughs> session <laughs> of question and answers in um, testing their <coughs> interpersonal skills. So it's a lot and I'm so proud that they went through all of it because it's not simple and it's something that really is I mean, incredible for us to see, especially when we see them in seventh grade, sometimes barely even being able to say their name. And now they can talk about world <laughs> issues, they can talk about anything you throw at them, and it's absolutely awesome as a Spanish teacher or world language teacher to see how much they've grown in their skills. So I'm so, so proud of all that they can do. Um, so what's really nice about the SEAL is that our program, we started in 2019 and we've grown quite a bit. So this was during the pandemic where we had to do SEAL presentations through Zoom back in the day before Zoom and before Google Meet. Um, in 2019, we started with 23 students earning the SEAL. This year we had 84. Um, and see. some students, I think four of our students that earned it in two uh, languages in addition to English. So it's pretty incredible. And we have a couple of pictures. I, didn't, I wasn't able to grab the whole group at the senior awards, and this was just the Schrader students, but we have the Thomas student, uh, students as well. I grabbed a couple of them, so you can see that. Um, these are their names. So uh, we had students earning the seal by literacy in French, German, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, and Turkish. Mm -hmm. And you can see that they're color-coded by their names. The ones that are in gold, um, gold and yellow, are the students who earned it in two world languages in addition to English. So they really had to do a lot to, to prove their skills. Um, so you can see. And this is all, these are all the community members who helped us out, from staff members from our entire program, 7 through 12, that came to help us out, um, especially with teachers getting COVID and having to take time off. We had to call in people, and it was flawless. It was great to see our middle school teachers coming to honor their abilities. I'm like, right? <laughs> it was yeah. a surprise for some of them. <laughs> Um, we also would like to thank the community members who stepped in to help us with our languages that we don't have representation with, like Turkish, um, Russian, and Ukrainian in past years. So we've been able to reach out to the community and develop relationships with a lot of people who speak different languages. So great. it's a great honor to um, not only students who take languages in our classes, but also our heritage and native speakers that speak at home as well. So. I have brought these guys to talk a little bit about their experience. I'll turn it over to them. Brooke, do you want to, you'll go last. <laughs> Cam, do you want to start? Sure. <clears throat> so I'm Cameron Sannon, a senior at Schrader. And for the seal of biliteracy, I chose to study the history and culture of Cuba. And for me, this was a very interesting experience because the seal gave me the motivation for uh, going forth and doing this research, research about a country that I didn't know much about. And through the e experience of doing this research, it, uh, it opened my mind to cultures I would have never uh, have experienced uh, otherwise. Uh, me personally, um, I am of Afro-Caribbean heritage. My family's from uh, Haiti and Puerto Rico. So I've grown up hearing little bits and pieces of Spanish, but never um, enough to the point where I was fluent in it. And uh, s the class of Spanish uh, throughout high school has given me the uh, ability to now speak this uh, language that has had such a strong impact on uh, my family history. So that has been the most important part to me about the seal of bioliteracy, being able to reconnect with, uh, with the elements of a culture that has slowly faded from my family over the years. And it's r sort of reinvigorated this this true sense of uh, Latino culture within, uh, within my family. 
and that's that's really the, the large impact of it. But for for other students, I've noticed as well as the the um, the eye-opening experience of when you speak the same language as another person, you really start to see life the way they see it, and that's that's truly revolutionary for a world that can be very closed-minded nowadays. So being able to see from the point of view of someone else is a truly great thing, especially for students around my age who may not have had an experience like that yet in their lives. Thank great. you. Go ahead, Michael. <laughs> uh -huh. Hi again. Um, so I did my seal in German, and so we had about four countries to choose from because not as much of the world speaks German as like Spanish or some of the other languages. So I chose Switzerland, and I can now confidently say I know more about Swiss federal elections than anyone has the right to know. Um, but uh, so we put all of our information that we did research on in a slideshow, like everyone said, and I got to present it in front front of uh, my German teachers, the German teacher from Thomas, who I had never met until that point, but then the middle school teacher, who I had, Mrs. Gillette, and then Frau McCann, who I had all of high school, and it was very scary, um, but <laughs> especially the interrogation part, as Ms. Hall uh, said, but it was... We, we, no, we don't I call don't it interrogation. So. Presentation. Um, but that's presentation. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was very eye-opening, like Cam said, to see other cultures. Because in German class, at least, we learned a lot about Germany, but we didn't learn a lot about the other countries that spoke German. So Austria, Liechtenstein, Switzerland, in my case. And so to see everything kind of come together and realize, well you know, not all German-speaking countries are exactly alike. Mm. It, was, it was very eye-opening. And getting to do the research project itself, uh, I read an article on, like, how the Swiss government is accepting Ukrainian refugees. And I didn't really know how the Swiss government was reacting to the Ukrainian crisis. So to see that and to see how the Swiss government was actually assisting in that, it was, it was very eye-opening. And then, obviously, how I'm going to use it in the future, if I ever go to a place like Germany or like Switzerland, I can confidently navigate around now. Um, but more than that, like Cam said, again, just connecting with that culture and being able to communicate, it really is just inspiring. And when you're able to communicate with someone directly in their language, it really is... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? It really is just eye-opening again, just seeing how cultures interact with each other and seeing how uh, we can all, you know, learn a thing or two from each other. So with that, thank you guys. Yeah, thank Thanks, you. Michael. Hello, um, I'm Samantha Walensky. I'm a senior at Schrader and I got my seal in Spanish. Um, for my project, I studied Peru and I really knew nothing going into it. I learned a lot about like the indigenous people in Peru. Um, specifically, like I found a great connection with learning about a photographer, Yayo Lopez, who became like world renowned for like redefining beauty and like importance of like not necessarily like physical or stereotypical beauty um, in Peru. Um, that was something that really stuck with me that I've taken in, uh, like to heart from this project. Um, I think that the most like, well, yes, the presentation was terrifying, but going forward, uh -huh. um, I think that it, it's going to be very helpful. I want to work f um, for CPS uh, with the city. You, being able to speak in a language that these children could possibly be fluent in, it could be their first language, is comforting and will allow me to go further and offer me more opportunities. In fact, I already have a job lined up for this summer because of my seal and being able to speak this language, um, teaching the UPA um, students at MCC um, Spanish and early education Spanish. Um, so, okay, <laughs> yeah. Good. Congrats, that's wonderful. Yeah, congratulations. Hola, pura vida. Hola, ¿cómo estás? So you all know me pretty well, uh, but what you might not know is that Spanish has been my favorite subject for as long as I've been taking it. Um, this year I took AP Spanish with Senor Hall, and I was assigned a country project that was used for my SEAL presentation, which we actually started back in junior year, which was pretty nice because we got a good chunk of the project started. 
Um, so then we created seven minute presentations about our country. I did Costa Rica. And as you heard everyone laugh when I said Pura Vida, I say Pura Vida to everything. We all thought that that's all you were going to be able to hear during the speaking section of the AP exam. And for some people, that was probably true. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I learned all about Costa Rican culture, which included like their popular phrases, housing styles, dance, music, food, um, and so much more. And like everyone else has said, it really does open your eyes to other cultures and life lifestyles. Um, Obviously, earning the seal is a really big academic achievement, but it definitely will help me in the future. I've decided that I would love to study abroad when I'm in college, hopefully to Costa Rica. That would be awesome. (laughs) And I'm really excited to continue um, furthering my knowledge in the Spanish language and culture, which will help me with my Spanish skills. But I also wanted to say that, in my opinion, the world language department we have at Schrader is fantastic. Um, The level of detail our teachers have is one of a kind, specifically Senora Hall. (laughs) (laughs) I've had the privilege of having Senora twice. She is an amazing teacher. She's very kind. She's gone out of her way attending these AP boot camp things um, (laughs) and grading the APs to ensure that we're both prepared for our exams, but also for the real world. She is an advocate for her students and those to come. She's taught us a lot about the world in very fun ways. And most importantly, you can always find her students laughing. (laughs) Keeping educators like her at Schrader and in our district makes our community a better place and gives us a brighter future. And if you're wondering, no, she did not make me write that. And she did not know I was going to write that. (laughs) But I just wanted to take time to. And I've already solidified her grade. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. thank you, thank you. Um, Muchas gracias por su tiempo y que tenga un buen día. Thank you so much for your time and have a great night. That was wonderful. I know it. Congratulations to all of you. That's an incredible achievement, and you should be very proud of yourselves. I know. I, Thank you for sharing that. With I us was just going to say that. I know. I know you guys got a. You guys all exited on us here. We might have to ask you some questions and whatnot still. So, um, but yeah, that was one of the first things I was going to say. Is I actually got to see this in action, the interrogation, if you will, in action. And not only was it impressive, like you guys all are tonight. This has been an amazing presentation. Um, one of the going back to what Brooke said a minute ago, funny, because after the presentation ended in one of them, we kept talking Spanish, and I actually know a little Spanish, and I don't think that they knew I knew Spanish, but there was something about dinero in there, and Mrs. Hall started laughing and everything, and what they were trying to do is get me to commit to money, is what they said in Spanish to me, so, but it was a, I know money for trips, that's exactly what it was, so, but... It was fun. So I, I want to leave it because I don't know if our board members wanted to say anything or if they wanted to add a, add a question. I definitely want to say, I think it's really important. Like, you know, <coughs> the bilingual seal is really important. And not only that, but it's really opened up opportunities for you um, career-wise that you wouldn't have had before. I can tell you that we, I work for a global company. And so it's, it's everyday jobs that need to be spoken in that native language that you're working with your customers or you're working with team members. And so whether you're doing engineering or sales, and that interrogation piece <laughs> continues because they're questioning you on your expertise. So being able to speak to, speak to people around the world is really, really important. And I think it's going to really help you with whatever career choice that you choose. I wish that it was something, it's something now as an adult that I want to go back because Spanish is something that I, you know, I I won't get those jobs, those projects because they need a Spanish speaking project manager. So it's something that now as an adult, I wish I could go back. And even though I took Spanish, I never kept up on it. So keep up on your your languages, by the way, that's really important. And um, I wish I had done that. So I just say bravo for all the hard work. And I'm telling you, it will definitely have a return on investment for all the time and effort that you've put into it um, because you just became more valuable to our community and our world. So thank, I think that's great. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your experiences. Yeah. Um, I'm a high school teacher. So like anytime kids, your, students your age are doing amazing things, I'm just so impressed. Um, another thing too is as a mom of littles, I hope someday my children will be like you guys where they're willing to challenge themselves and, and do the, the terrifying things. And, <laughs> but, I mean, my, my children are half Chinese, and, and their culture has kind of lost its way a little bit. So I hope that language is a way that they can reconnect with their culture. And you demonstrate how important that is, not only for ourselves, but to help us work within, that, within our community as well. So you've, bravo. I, can't, I don't know what else to say, but you're definitely some shining stars of Webster that I can't wait to see what you do with your futures. I think we have a pretty amazing 
mm -hmm. foreign language department in Webster. I am so proud of all of you. This is an incredibly labor intensive project that you took on and you did it and you were so successful to go from such a small number of students in 2019 to the incredible amount of you that took part in it. Congratulations and take advantage of every opportunity to travel the world and use your language skills. There is a whole world that we haven't seen and you will shine. Congratulations. Oh, I mean, there's not much more to say other than I have two ninth graders next year who will be at Schrader, both taking Spanish, so now I'm really excited to see what they come home with. <laughs> and I just would like to say that you're breaking down barriers, and that is important, and you're going to bring the world together. Thank you. Yeah, very impressive. Me, Iha, lives in Guadalajara. <laughs> Oh. Oh, so, uh, and she, she is a graduate of Thomas in 2005 and uh, took AP Spanish and it made it easy for her to speak uh, the language. So, uh, Senora Hall, how do we get every student graduating bilingual? Please think about that. I have some ideas. <laughs> uh, Dr. McCarthy? <laughs> Jerry's heard on the earful of it. Which is classic. Can you do the freshman to grand hotel? <laughs> I know. <laughs> They're hooked. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's too. I don't know that everyone is aware of this, but each um, student that gets a seal of biliteracy earns us one of the ranking points for yes. the 21st yes. century skills, which is great for our district. It's it is. It's definitely and we've also been, um, there's other districts that have reached out to us to see like how our program is run and get some feedback and get some ideas. And so. It's awesome. It's great. It's awesome. It's for our Excellent. We hope you're very proud of yourselves mm -hmm. and all you've accomplished. Mm -hmm. Thanks so lot. much for sharing with us. <laughs> Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Great night. Thank you. Okay, M moving on to board business. Mm -hmm. Oh, the report. Yes, sorry about that. Can we have a motion, please, to approve the instruction report? So moved. Janice? Second by Mike and Mer Mike. Okay. <laughs> Simultaneous. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. No, I don't vote. <laughs> Why am I putting my hand up? <laughs> Did you vote? I just got excited. Did you I just vote? got excited yes. about the report. Yeah, it was an exciting report. It was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, um, this is the last business meeting of the year for me as president and as a board member. The last couple of years have been very challenging and also there are celebrations. We've had a very successful leadership transition. We have near completion of two transformational capital projects. We passed our annual budget and we have a strong finish to the year, as we can see from just what we've heard tonight, all the celebrations that everyone is so thrilled and grateful to be able to do in person again. There have also been significant challenges. Many districts across the country experienced difficult meetings, and we were no exception. Adherence to the district code of conduct and repeated erroneous statements, also posted on social media, have been problematic. I'd like to clarify a few points so that the corrections become part of public record. Neither I nor my husband own a company any longer. It was acquired back in 2012. We do not administer benefits for the district. I have never profited from my service nor served with a conflict of interest to this district. I spent a considerable amount of time responding to phone calls and emails on behalf of the board to improve communication and understanding. As I take my leave, I do so with an abundance for gratitude for the relationships I have. There's a lot of work that occurs behind the scenes, and I've enjoyed working with everyone. I think our district, like many others, faces some challenges ahead in the importance of the relationship of the board, superintendent, and community is so important in ensuring that district operations continue with as little disruption as possible. I believe public education is one of the greatest institutions this country has and exists for the benefit of all children, regardless of need, 
and identity. I hope this is something the community decides is worth protecting to keep free from special interest groups and political agendas. Stability is very important for boards. There is a substantial learning curve. We have endured a good deal of disruption and I hope that this board can continue the amazing work that goes on across this district and keep focused on students and supporting staff to move the district forward. I'm proud of my service and record and feel very privileged to work with so many wonderful people who work so hard for the benefit of this community's children. I wish you all the best. Mm. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I knew that was gonna be rough, but um, okay. Okay, all right, and I'm next. All right, so start out with, uh, again, I just wanna take a moment to thank board president Tammy Gorowski and board, um, board member Maria Regillo for their dedication to our students, our staff, and community through their years of service on the Board of Education. Both of you share an unwavering commitment to our student, students and to public education. You have given countless hours on a volunteer basis to support all of our One Webster School District accomplishments together. Tammy, you have been a member of the board since 2016 and you've been board president since the 16-17 school year and I am thankful for all the times you have been available to discuss district matters often at late, late hours of night and many times on the weekends and in all wee hours of the day. And again, you did that as a dedicated volunteer. Every time I called you, you were always there. And if you weren't there when, when I called, you'd call me back very shortly, within a few minutes, and we had many conversations. So again, your caring attitude towards our students and staff, and certainly the work that you've done uh, to help us be in a better place has been commended. And Maria, I've enjoyed working alongside of you as a board member since 2018. And before that, I felt even more fortunate to work alongside with you as an outstanding and amazing teacher at Willink Middle School while I was principal there with you. Uh, I, I can't say enough. Uh, you, your heart has been and always will be about students. It always will be. And you have done some amazing things for our district as a board member and as an educator. To both of you, I thank you both for your commitment and you have been an extraordinary asset, and I remain grateful for both of your service. Thank you very, very much. Now I'll turn it to um, I don't think there's any question that between the two of you, you have put your heart and soul into everything that we've done and everything that we've accomplished over the last two years. You've both also stuck very firmly to your beliefs, and it's been eye-opening to have such interesting and respectful conversations um, and the input and the education that you brought forward that helped me in the last two years has been just amazing and Tammy you led us through at least the two years that I've been here through two very difficult years with the pandemic so you've led us through some very troubling times but you've led us well and um, Maria it's been great having you and alongside us in that time as well so Thank you for all of your time and dedication and in learning in the last two years, everything that you've brought forward to help me with, as you mentioned earlier, the learning curve that comes along with being a board member. So thank you. Go over to Mike, any comments? Sure. And then we'll come over and so Maria. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Want to do it in Italian? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you stop us and you talk, everybody listens because you speak from the heart. You have honesty, integrity, and sincerity, and it's all about the kids. You always think about the kids and what is it we can do to serve them, and that is very much appreciated. And I will remember that as we go forward on the board, that what would Maria say? <laughs> like this. So thank you. And Tammy, I honestly think in my heart, you had the toughest job in Monroe County the last two years. Um, you led us through uncharted territory. You did it with dignity, with grace, and perseverance to make sure, make sure we got our work done to benefit the students. And there was never a doubt about how hard you worked, 
how many hours per week, and that you wore your heart on your sleeve. And as tough as it was, you let us do it, and you should be proud about that and leave with your head hanging high. So thank you for all you've done. You're leaving us in great shape. Thank you. Go <coughs> <coughs> Thank it's definitely, I've only had the pleasure of working with you for a year, and I know that we did not always agree, right? We had really challenging conversations, and I definitely respect what you bring to the board with your knowledge and with the way you tried to lead and, and bringing people together that have a lot of different ideas. So I know that it was definitely a challenge, and I appreciate the work and effort that you put into the last year, and I wish you the best of luck as you move forward in everything that you're doing and spending time with your family, too. <laughs> um, as a teacher, moving from teacher to board member, it, it was definitely a different way of looking at things and looking from the managerial perspective versus the, the teacher perspective, but um, I really appreciate all the time and energy you put into teaching me the ropes, making sure I understood you know, the rules and the policies and really welcoming me in, into a lot of the decision making, those were, like, you know, legislative and, um, and also trusting us to you know, do what's right by our district as well. So. Um, thank you so much, and good luck, and enjoy your grandbaby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep it short, <laughs> because we all know I cry all the time. But from the bottom of my heart, thank you both. Um, thank you for giving tirelessly to our entire school community. They say that board service is one of the toughest, toughest volunteer roles of all. We've lived through the toughest times, but we've also lived through some really good times. Maria, your laughter, your uh, humor, your ability to make us all smile in, in a very serious moment, I will, I will always remember that. Tammy, you will be my favorite travel buddy, even though you missed the plane once. <laughs> I'll forgive you for that. Um, thank you for bringing passion, insight, and experience to our board table. Thank you for teaching me so much. We all joined about the same time, but I have learned so much from all of you. Um, and thank you for pushing me to do better and be better. You've both impacted my life in ways I'll never be able to express to anybody, and I'll always be grateful, and I treasure every moment that we've spent together. On behalf of all of our community, thank you all for your service, for your loyalty, your leadership, and your guidance. I will miss you next year, but you'll always be in our hearts. Thank you. I forgot, we have Maria's plaque from Monroe County School Boards Association. Oh, so yeah. Thank you for your service. Uh, and we have one other guest, if uh, Tom, would you mind, Mr. Strunick, would you mind coming on up for just to say a few words? since I've been at a board meeting. <laughs> and from the way you were discussing things, I'm glad. <laughs> I wanted to be here tonight just to express my appreciation for the work with the two people at the board and one back here who I didn't know was going to be here. So I'll just take a couple of seconds. <laughs> but whenever I think of Maria, um, music comes to my head a lot. And Joni Mitchell's song, Both Sides Now, comes to mind. Um, she's seen life from both sides. She knows the illusions of life. And she's seen the kindness of people, and she's seen the violence of people, physical and verbal. And it sounds like all of you have gone through that in the last couple of years. People are afraid, they're angry, and they reach out. What Joni was talking about in that song was, she says it's an illusion, but you have to make a choice of how you wish to see life, the good or the bad. And having known Maria as a teacher for a long time, and we worked together in staff development um, through um, her work with the Teachers Association, um, I've got to see her make choice after choice after choice, and it's always been for the good. Um, you can turn, and you become bitter, bitter, and you can become angry, but she makes choices for the good. And I would say, yes, she focuses on kids, but the reality is she focuses on teachers, she focuses on anybody who's in the room with her. Um, some would call her a bleeding heart. Um, <laughs> some would say the ultimate Italian mother. 
Um, I would say she's the nurturing soul who helps bring out the best in each of us. So thank you for your service and your support along the way. Tammy um, is a very special person, and I've been away, so I have, I've only seen glimpses of things in the news about what's been happening in this <laughs> district. But you couldn't have had a better person, whether you agree or disagree with Tammy's personal opinion. Um, there's a saying that says, um, you should do good for people, and you should do good for people not for what they might do in return for you or who they are, but for who you are. And that's Tammy. She does it because of who she is. When we first met, um, she was a parent volunteer just starting her career, so to speak, which has probably spanned 10,000 hours or more of volunteer time over that time. But she would go up to people, she'd listen, she'd try to figure out what was going on. She got very involved with support for special ed kids. That was truly amazing. Um, and the things that I remember about her was her eyes. When you meet with Tammy, her eyes look into you and they look at you and they say, I accept you, I know who you are. And the other part of that is, some people think that's, oh, just being kind. But there's a bigger portion to the, who she is about that. It's because she knows our faults too. She knows we all have the faults. And she doesn't accept us in spite of them. She accepts us because of they are part of us, the human character. We all have those faults. I have to thank you for helping me get my career launched in so many ways. And I want to be here tonight to say thank you to you. And if you can indulge me for just a couple of minutes. I, this is like winning the trifecta. I didn't know yeah. Sue Casey was going to be here, and I wasn't in town when, when she left the board. But for good or bad, I wouldn't be sitting here tonight if it wasn't for her and her role on the board as well. But beyond that, because that's not so important, we'll link the pool, the field house, all of those changes. She literally sat on those committees for hundreds of hours making that happen. And she made it happen in a very thoughtful, progressive, and let's get this done way, and a little mumbling under her breath. But it got done because she made it get done in her kind way. And that includes meetings with the town board and, and other situations. So I just want to say thank you to Sue. And there's an Indian saying, if I knew she was here, I would have looked it up better. But it's something that goes like, travel lightly on this earth and leave your footprints in the deeds you've done. And I will tell you, in this district, those buildings, those facilities, the things that the kids have, she had a huge role to play with that over the life of her tenure with this district, and I'm sure continuing. Thank you all for your time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, yeah, he was. It's always great to have a former superintendent come back and give us those words. We appreciate that. Sue Casey, thank you so much for your service again. Like Tom said, we definitely appreciate you. And we appreciate you being here tonight uh, and coming back from New Zealand. I know you're just fresh off the, sh fresh off the trip from New Zealand. So it's great to have you here. I know it. <laughs> Thanks again, Tom. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. <coughs> Continue to move forward, and that brings us to the business portion of the meeting where um, Brian Freeman will be joining us via pre-recorded pre uh, videos that will walk us through each of these business items, and there are several, as there are at the end of the year, and um, this is uh, the first time this is happening, and we'll do this with the support of Paul and guidance of Paul. So first we have the March and April 2022 Treasurer's Reports, um, and I guess we cue Brian. Good evening, everybody. Sorry I there can't be with you in person, but let's get you a rundown of our March and April treasurer's reports. 
First up, uh, on March, for the executive summary, you'll see it's a very large state aid month. Uh, it is the end of the fiscal year for New York State, so we receive a bulk of our aid on March 30th. Uh, you'll also see an increase for the month of March in our aquatics events. Uh, for facilities rentals, uh, we hosted quite a few events in uh, January and February that have come in this month. Uh, and our very first uh, CRISA federal grant reimbursement has arrived nine months after grants middle. On the appropriations side, not too much going on, all pretty much standard, except you'll see a little bit more on the school lunch costs have increased on the commodity side. So that is our report for March. And then moving into April, April is a pretty um, small month as follows revenues going on. Uh, we received the rest of our unpaid taxes from the county. Um, very little general fund aids this month. You'll see a few more interest dollars uh, with some of our investments and uh, not a lot in the terms of federal reimbursements. On the appropriations side, uh, also pretty standard. Uh, things are down a little bit because we have uh, begun wrapping up in the month of uh, March and April our expenditure uh, in the general fund. And so we've started winding down there as well as school lunch coming down because uh, April has the break in there, so uh, less expenditures there. Uh, and a few more capital fund expenditures. All in all, pretty standard months for March and April uh, on the Treasurer's Report. Okay, I guess the disclaimer to all of this is that if we had questions, we were supposed to submit them beforehand. So I will, if anyone has comments, Please feel free to share. Otherwise, we can entertain a motion to approve the March and April treasurer's reports as presented. Mike, in a second by Janice. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Next is the internal audit approval and corrective action plan. All righty. Next up is our is internal seamless. audit review. Uh, this was shared by the Bonadio group. Uh, with our audit committee uh, last week or two weeks ago now and what they looked at for our internal testing was uh, some HR and benefits functions and so you can see is by the report uh, there is a few instances where uh, resigned employees uh, still had access to the facility longer than necessary they cited us and then one out of 30 employees had enrollment forms that were missing um, as part of the review of selected uh, insurance folders. Um, so our response uh, to their report was to uh, follow through on their recommendations that they gave to us uh, and cross train some HR and security employees. So the delays in shutting off account access uh, when staff are out should not be an issue moving forward. And in addition uh, to digitize the process for insurance enrollment uh, should allow for those enrollment forms to be automatically uploaded to personnel files. All in all, a pretty good um, internal audit uh, from the Bonadio group uh, from the district. And just as a reminder of where um, we get what areas they look at, um, they ask us um, in a pre-planning meeting um, if there's been any changeover or areas that haven't been looked at in a while. And they always try to look at those key areas um, around financial operations or human resource. Um, so with some of the retirements and movement within HR, uh, they pinpointed looking at uh, those areas. <clears throat> okay, um, we've had a chance to look at the executive summary along with the audit testing and recommendations. Um, any comments? Yeah, Jenny, um, so several of us were at the audit meeting. So we got to hear from the auditor himself uh, and I was absolutely convinced they were very thorough in the audit you know there were no stones that were left uncovered uh, and have high confidence in Bonadio to conduct a very effective audit so the two findings were addressed with countermeasures so just wanted to say I felt very comfortable after hearing excellent. the detail excellent thank you I agree sure. can we have a motion then to approve the internal audit and corrective action plan Shanna, second by Linda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Moving on to the standardization resolution. Um, 
Brian, what would you uh, like to we share? We did this a few years ago, about October of uh, 2017, after the uh, 2016 capital project. And we thought it was time to revisit um, the standardization resolution with all the work that we have going on. And really what it is is a resolution approved by the Board of Education um, to ensure the same equipment and systems the district currently has in place uh, will be incorporated into any future bidding documents and bidding requirements. Um, one of the main reasons why we do this is, one, is because of this standard amount, substantial amount of equipment. Uh, we want the uniformity. Uh, we don't want to have to try to blend different systems together. Um, we do a significant amount of training for our uh, facility staff with this equipment and with these systems, so it would require a significant um, lift on their part to get retrained on some of these areas. And so, um, as you can see by the listing that we've provided, um, it's, it's a fairly substantial list, um, but in conjunction with the architects uh, uh, for the District of Labella and campus construction, and uh, the school attorneys, uh, just making sure that we are crossing the T's and dotting the I's when it comes to uh, bidding and, and these resolutions. Uh, this is our, the list uh, that we would like to have standardized uh, for whenever we do bidding or purchasing um, moving forward for the district. And one of the things we think would be a best practice is just to relook at this probably every spring um, because uh, bidding is becoming such a national uh, cooperative and we're seeing uh, many of these products and, and companies and services uh, jumping on national purchasing cooperatives and regional purchasing cooperatives that we'll want to revisit this every year and make sure um, we are getting the best value and also uh, getting the most comprehensive list for the systems and equipment we have in place. Any comments, given given the scope of all that's entailed, especially with the capital projects, this certainly makes good sense. So, um, can I have a motion, please, to approve the standardization resolution by Maria, second, second by Janice. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Moving on to policy 4010, district investments. So this is the first read, um, and any comments? I well. We'll see what Brian has to say. <laughs> Sorry. Make a little bit more sense when we get to the next resolution. Uh, but the policy 4010 on district investments, um, for the district to kind of maximize our funds, we have to change one part of our policy. Um, you see, the only thing that is changing is we're adding a G uh, to the section that allows us to um, use cooperative municipal investment programs. Um, providing there is collateralization as required by law. There's the one change to this investment policy for the first read tonight in order for us to um, invest with a group um, called NICLAS, which you'll uh, see in the next um, kind of resolution. But right now, as for this, is just to first read to approve um, a change in the district investment policy so we'll be able to uh, change our some of our investments moving forward. Has a motion to <clears throat> um, can we have a motion to approve the NICLAS investments resolution as written? Maria? No, no. Wait, Wait, policy. First, read. first read of the policy. It's, first read. it's asking for a motion. So yeah, it's, we'll have consider have that a mistake? No, In, we have to have a motion for the first read. Right? Oh, for the first, oh. And, then the we can do, and then we'll do the resolution. Perfect, okay. We'll talk about that. Can we have a motion, please, to approve the first read of the NICLAS investments resolution? So moved. By Jen, second? Second. Janice, all in favor? Aye. Thank you. It was of the policy. We're, I'm sorry, I said resolution. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Cindy, I meant policy, please. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you. Sorry. Moving Next on. up is the resolution <laughs> for the district to be able to invest okay. in NICLAS. And, uh, NICLAS is really a, a purchasing cooperative. Um, it's called the New York Cooperative Liquid Assets Security System, NICLAS for short. short. Um, and it, it provides the opportunity to invest funds on a cooperative basis with short-term investments. Um, 
you know, there's a board of directors that is overseen. Once you get in, anybody could be a, uh, that is part of it, any uh, municipality could be make up uh, the board that oversees this. Uh, they use a third party public trust advisors to administer this. And then US Bank holds all the cash and securities for the cooperative. Uh, this is not an investment strategy the district has entertained before. Uh, historically, the rates um, have been below uh, what we receive from, from banks and from other government lending institutions. Um, so we've never looked at joining this. But uh, right now, their rates are very advantageous. So we want to hop on and uh, try to maximize our investing strategy. So to be able to do this, uh, we obviously need to change our board uh, policy to add that one little phrase to join these cooperatives. And then uh, secondly is to pass the resolution as outlined here uh, for the district to begin investing. Uh, and just as, you know, for information, right now their rates are about um, five times higher than we're, we're seeing in a couple other areas. So we're looking to um, move some funding over as soon as possible uh, with these nine class investments. They're, they're really beating our traditional investment avenues. Uh, so with that, I would uh, recommend approving the resolution attached for us to uh, join this municipal cooperative agreement. Any comments? Okay. <clears throat> Can I have a motion, please, to approve the Nye Class Investments Resolution? So moved. Janice, second. Mike, Maria. <laughs> Maria. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Moving on to projected reserve transfers. Mr. Freeman. Estimated reserve transfers, the fiscal year is quickly uh, winding down. One of the standard things that we need to do in accordance to SED regulations is give the Board of Education an estimate of where our reserve transfers will be, uh, concluding the 21-22 fiscal year. Right now, this is all unaudited. Um, we've had a, you know some initial audit conversations, but uh, final transfers are approved uh, in early August at that board meeting once we've kind of gotten a wrap up on where our audited financials are and the 2022-23 tax warrant is done as well. Um, so right now these are just purely estimated transfers not to exceed and I've also added what our May balances are there for your references as well. Um, some of these funds of where we're looking are based on conversations with our auditors and part of our long-range uh, reserve plan as well. So right now, these are estimated uh, possible transfers not to exceed uh, across these several reserves that we're looking at. Any comments? Okay. <clears throat> and finalizing in August. Can we have a motion, please, to approve the projected res reserve transfers? Mike? Second. Second by Janice. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Moving on next to the tax certiorari resolutions approval. Um, between the district and CE Webster LLC, which um, for all practical uh, purposes is the Hampton Inn on Hard Road. Uh, this case only dates back one fiscal year. Uh, property owners were looking to reduce the assessment considerably by over by about four million dollars. Um, so that would have put the district on potential refund exposure of one hundred and eight thousand five hundred eight dollars. Um, petitioners agreed to discontinue um, any refunds with a reduced assessment moving forward. With the resolution prepared by our attorney. Uh, the town is on board and agreed with this as well. Um, that we feel like this is a good deal and we should uh, approve this as well from the district standpoint uh, just because it mitigates any refunds uh, moving forward for the district. Um, and so I would recommend approving the resolution as attached. Again, okay. Um, can I have a motion, please, to approve the resolution to settle the tax certiorari with C.E. Webster, LLC? So moved. Janice, Innocent. second Innocent. by Linda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next, we have 
bond resolution for buses, which is a roll call vote. Board of Education to approve the resolution okay. allowing the district now to formally borrow for the school buses, which were uh, thankfully approved by the community a couple of weeks ago as part of the budget vote. It was the first, second, first proposition. Um, so this is just the overall legal resolution allowing the district, we do this every single year, uh, that allows us to go out this fall and borrow for the buses. Uh, we are in need of a roll call vote for this, which Mrs. Cushman will uh, lead you through, uh, but pretty standard resolution items um, that happen every single year. Do you want to ask for a motion? Can we have a motion, please, to approve the bond resolution for buses and estoppel notice as approved by the community at the May 17th, 2022 vote, followed by a roll call vote? So moved. Janice and Maria. Okay, Mike? Four. Maria? Yes. Janice? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Linda? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Shanna? Thank you. And next <clears throat> board business is the approval of the Webster Central School District safety plan for 2022-2023. We got one more. This was action, the action was included in the bond resolution. Okay. So he doesn't have anything more? Brian doesn't have anything more, Paul? The estoppel notice, which needs to be published in the paper since the district uh, is going to be borrowing. Uh, so we need to publish the bond resolution uh, summary uh, in our paper of record. Okay, so the estoppel notice was included in the previous motion. Do you want another motion? With the, the previous one? Or I yeah, I did the way I read it. Motion to approve the bond resolution for buses and estoppel and notice. Estoppel. Okay. All right. As approved by the community. At, okay. Okay. So thank you. Right. And moving on to the 2022-2023 Webster Central School District safety plan approval. The final adoption of the school-wide safety plan Remember uh, last month we came and opened up the hearing on the school safety plan in the comment <coughs> period. Uh, we have seen no comments uh, in the last 30 days. Um, so our plan is presented as is uh, that we are providing for you this evening. Can we have a motion then to please to approve the Webster Central School District Safety Plan for 2022-2023. Second. Yeah, did you have one? I'm sorry. I didn't know if Neil was gonna come up. Please do. Okay. Greetings. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Flood. <laughs> So uh, I'm obviously here to answer any questions about the plan. Um, we've certainly been bombarded the last week or so with questions from the community um, about where we are as a district and what we're willing to share, and that is always a slippery slope. We'd like to tell parents what we're doing, but there are certain things we have to think carefully about what we share with the community. Uh, you know, we've, as you know, we do four lockdown drills a year. We do extensive training. We do, uh, we've invested heavily in uh, significant increased improvements to the schools that are gonna occur this summer at all the elementary schools. Um, we've spent uh, a considerable amount of money on an updated radio system. And we are now the only district in the county that has the ability to be on the public safety communication system. Uh, so that's a plus. We will be able to communicate directly with the Webster Police, Webster Fire, uh, if we needed to in an emergency. We've practiced those emergencies. We are the only district in the county that I'm aware of that actually has done 
a full-scale active shooter training, which we did at Schlegel Road two, two years ago, two summers ago. Uh, there was one at MCC and there was one at Brockport State, but we're the only school district to have actually conducted that exercise, um, which is kind of a sad commentary on our times. Um, but those are the times in which we live, and um, it's the sad reality of where we are as a country without getting into the politics of all of that. Um, we have an extensive list of things we've done, and I know we've talked to some parents, and most of those calls have been handled by building administrators because they are their clients, so to speak. Um, but there are some that I've spoken to, and I know the superintendent's had just a couple of emails in the last Absolutely. week or two. Um, and people are scared, and I get it. Um, unfortunately, they're bombarded with a lot of statistics, not all of which are accurate. Um, but any single shooting is one too many, so it really doesn't matter, you know, how many there are, it's one too many. And um, most of us in this profession never thought we'd see another Sandy Hook, so it's really, really, really hard to get your head around that, that whole event. So that's kind of where we are. Is it, that's a really 35,000 foot view and I'll be more than willing to answer questions. Um, I know I think we shared a memo of 27 or 28 different things we've done or are doing. Um, and some of the things that the state is talking about, like Alyssa's law with the panic buttons, we're already part of the way there. So for us to get there won't be a great leap. Um, Whereas I think some districts are going to have to start from scratch. So, so many offices? Yes. Okay. It, yeah. I, I'll be glad to sit down and explain to anybody after the fact what we're doing, but it's going to be tied into some other systems. And, and so to get there, I haven't seen Alyssa's Law in context yet to see what they're doing, specifically they're asking for. Um, but I don't think it's going to be a big lift for us to get there, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. So, questions? Anyone on the plan or anything? I just have a. <coughs> nope, nope. I just want to say about safety and security. We always think about the shootings, things like that. But mm -hmm. your team does an outstanding job every single day well, thank that you. you are out there. I see it because I take my kid, my grandchildren to school and pick them up, and. In all the inclement weather, they're always out there, always looking out for everybody, and the administrators and staff that also participate. So I just want to say thank you. It's thank not you. just about the big stuff. It's about no. the everyday stuff. And you guys really deserve kudos. Thank it, you. It, it is. We focus lately on the big things, but I think the little things matter, too. I agree. So, in fact, I know they do. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, I just have questions, so you go ahead. I don't have a question. I have a comment, and I, I, I want to thank you. Um, we have been proactive on many things. Our capital projects included many mm -hmm. safety and security measures, and, and that was um, from the advice of you and, and your team. So I, I'm grateful because, like you said, we don't have great steps to get to the next level. So I, I'm very grateful for that. So I just wanted to say thank you. I, I, I firmly believe we're a leader in at least Monroe County in safety and security, but it still doesn't make me sleep very well at night no. sometimes. <laughs> um, but that's the nature of 40-some years of doing this kind of work, probably. So. I was going to say, you know, when we when when these incidents happen, and we look at how how they happened and, and how they got into the school and how everything played out, I was really impressed by how much we've put into place that would have prevented a lot of those situations. Mm -hmm. And like you said, unfortunately, it just feels like it's never enough because there's const there's the next thing that they look to overcome to get into schools. And I do appreciate how much thought we've put into to being proactive with security. Um, it's, uh, it's your absolute worst nightmare. And it's our you know, biggest obligation is to keep our children safe. And so when somebody gets past that, it's horrifying. And so I know there's been a lot of parents concerned this week and have been asking a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And some things we can divulge and some can't because you want them to be, 
You don't want to put all of your every single security measure out there. Um, so I really appreciate that. And um, and as far as the active shooter, um, the, it sounds like you guys did a two years ago. There was like mm -hmm. a I don't know. I don't want to call it a demonstration, but it was a test, so to speak. Drill. It was an actual drill. drill. Yeah. Would it be time to? And so one, my one question on that is: Do we do that in partnership with the police department? And would it be time to do another one of those? Or we did that in partnership with the. Uh, sheriff's office, the Webster police, the EMS community, the county, the fire department. So it's a massive lift. Okay. It doesn't mean we can't do it. Um, we can't do it alone. We, we right. will, uh, again, put the superintendent through some paces this fall with tabletops that we do um, that I am sure when we set those up, we'll invite board members to come and observe. And that is... Um, a series of simulated activities where we put the district emergency management team senior leadership through the paces of we're throwing problems at them and, and forcing them to respond with what do you do when this happens? We've done many of those. Uh, one of them was a violent incident at school. One of them was a school bus accident because that also kind of keeps me up at night. I mean, I think our biggest vulnerability a lot of days is in the fact that there's 8,000 children moving back and forth across this community, or, well, probably now there's 5,000 on buses because the other 3,000 get driven every day. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> um, having standing out on Clem Road every morning, I can tell you. Yes. <laughs> but um, I, avoid the, the, I avoid those streets <laughs> during certain but, times. Um, so we do a lot of tabletop exercises, and we'll, we kind of, as the, the pandemic, all those kind of things fell through um, their ability to do them, but we need to do another one this coming school year. Um, and we'll put Brian and his team a little bit on the hot seat, but the value is, uh, I'm a big proponent. I know you've heard me say that your, your body can't go where your mind has not already been. And the idea behind those exercises is to put your mind there. And while they're difficult to talk about, um, if we ever have something, even a school bus accident where there's injuries and serious injuries, we're going to be in a much better place to handle those. Mm -hmm. So, do you? I mean, how do you, this is such a sensitive topic um, as far as like how do you do we do how do we talk to students about preparing like what would we do you know telling students what you need to do in an active shooter type of situation? Do we talk to students? That's about a great that? question because. There are parents who have wanted us to do that, and there are parents who have not wanted us right. to do it's that. A, yeah, um, I can see that. So we'd have to decide. Is it? We've talked to staff. We did, we did uh, a 15-minute presentation that was, uh, well, Zoomed, but I guess it was a Google Meet to be technically correct, um, to all the faculty in Kevin Johnson and I did that in, I don't remember, January, February, I'd have to look up the date, but we did a 15 minute presentation where we talked about and showed some video of uh, some incidents and focused on talking to staff about what they should do and shouldn't do and have a plan and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. We haven't walked up yet to what do we want to do with students? And, I, and because there are parents that are all over right. the map. But we really train lockdowns. I mean, we don't just train fire drills anymore. We do train lockdowns, mm -hmm. which right. You know, we do do drills and yeah. talk so to them we about. Just talk about it as that as way, like it's a lockdown. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. But is there a? I could certainly make an uh, an argument that we might want to expand that. But it's you're going to get it's, right. It's you're going to really get both time. halves of that. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. a tough one. Yeah. Kids are asking more questions. I can tell you that right now, mm -hmm. which is. Kind of sad, no way. They see it every day. Right. It's yeah. really sad. Right, and they're bombarded with statistics on the media that are not always accurate. It's, you know, it's it's how you count. You know, there's a news article this week that says there's been 27 school shootings this year. Well, if you drill down to that, that includes accidental discharges on a school bus in a parking lot after hours if it's a school event, it, 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 and some of them are, are the real deal, but they're not active shooters coming into the building. They're uh, disputes that occur on school grounds where the unfortunate method of solving that dispute is with a weapon, a lot of them. Um, that doesn't make them right, that doesn't make them acceptable, but they are not 
but parents are convinced there's been right. this outpouring of active shooter scenarios where the frank reality of it, if you really want to talk stats, and in 2021, the FBI tracks those, there were 61 active shooter events, two of them were in schools. Most of them happened in commerce locations, but so, so it kind of all depends on how you count. Right, how do you talk realistically about it? <laughs> right. And so the, there's a realistic of what's really going on and not, you know, and also, you know, obviously take it for as serious as it is, which is terrifying. It's your correct. worst nightmare as a, as a school district. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'll just finish then with a, really an act, you know, showing a gratitude. Start out with, uh, with your security team, like Maria said earlier, they come to, to school and to work every day and, uh, and help us stay safe and they have relationships with the staff and with the kids that is, you know, it, goes, it doesn't go unnoticed and we definitely appreciate all the work that they do. We're also fortunate, we are not, we're in a position that not every school district in Monroe County and certainly not every school district in New York State has school resource officers. And I know mm -hmm. some people would like us to have more, and I get that, I get where we're at, but wow, we are incredibly fortunate to have, you know, Dave Hurley and Kevin Ambrosetti here with us uh, in our district every day. Uh, they're amazing. They're just both amazing people, but such an amazing resource. And, and certainly last but not least, I think it goes without saying, and I think we know this as a board, but I think it's really important for our community to know the unbelievable wealth of knowledge, experience, and expertise that we have and are fortunate to have with Neil Flood. He is one of a kind and he's, yeah, he doesn't like when I say this and do this, that's okay. I'm okay really with that. We, we can agree to disagree on that part, but uh, really there my hat's are, well, off to you. There are many and, that would agree I'm one of a kind, but I'm not sure what, <laughs> I'm not sure what kind they'd say. No, so. but we appreciate uh, the work that you do on a daily basis and certainly with, with your team. I mean, you've really made an amazing team. So thank you so well, much. Well, the Dave. district has been incredibly supportive over the years, both in a lot of ways. We well, couldn't do a lot of what we do if the board didn't put the money behind the, the, the concepts because you can have a lot of great ideas, but if you don't have the money to implement them, that's not going to happen. Right. You know, talk yeah. is cheap, but it doesn't get you anywhere when the stuff hits the fan. So yeah. I've been very fortunate. It's like a government. It's like a, it's like a government protection. I mean, I've gone into facilities that are like manufacturing for the government that are less locked down than our schools are, and what we've done in Webster. So that's, that's good. Why it is. Yep, I'm glad to hear that. Right. I'm like, it's and it's going to get better this summer at <laughs> the elementary. A the lot better. With the improvements that are being made, and the, even outside the, the building itself, mm -hmm. like that's what I mean. Like they may have armed guard, they have armed guards there, but they can still walk in buildings and certain doors, and they can get further than you can here. And um, so I really appreciate it. And even you know, down to the traffic. You know, when I'm dropping my kids off at Willing, like they're so good with being careful and watching and being vigilant about keeping kids safe and watching where they're crossing and controlling the traffic. I can't, you know, thank you enough for for what's been done with the district and and that's my biggest keeping our kids safe is so is so. Important. I agree. Yeah. So it's much appreciated and they've been under so much stress this year. The security has with everything that's been going on. So mm -hmm. they've it's been, been a able, challenge. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here and being able to address very real concerns that people are out home, hopefully yeah. listening and, and learning from you. I know we've always felt safe and appreciate everything your team has done throughout the year in our multiple locations as we move around the district. Um, you've always been here and you've always been supportive. So thank you. Thank you for that. All righty. Thanks, folks. Have a good night. And we do need a motion oh, to. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. I am out of my mind. <coughs> Moving on to board reports. Um, I know we've heard a, a good deal. Is there anything above and beyond anyone would like to share? Uh, DeWitt celebrated a very successful open house in conjunction with the carnival in, on May 26th, and they are having a Flag Day celebration on the 14th. June 17th is DeWitt Spirit Day, which <coughs> is going to be Superhero Day. Everyone can celebrate by dressing um, like their favorite superhero, and their field day is also on June 17th. 
and DeWitt is still looking for people to fill positions on the PTSA. The last meeting of this school year will be next Monday at 6 o'clock via Zoom. At Willink, um, Brian already said it, the sixth graders enjoyed a day at Niagara Falls. This Friday, June 10th, is the eighth grade breakfast. And once again, congratulations, Willink, on celebrating your 20 year anniversary. Spry is in need of a fundraising chair for next year. And um, they had a great meeting that was focused on preparing for uh, next year and year end activities. And I'd like to say thank you to all the Webster PTSAs for making all staff and teachers feel very appreciated, not just in May, but every month and every day of the school year. Thank you for everything you do for our kids and staff. That's it for me. Thank you. No, I, I think this is like it and everything else. Yes. yes. So we do want to say thank you, too, to all the PTSA representatives across the district. Um, when everything was remote, nobody stopped working, nobody stopped organizing activities for families to stay engaged, and we definitely are very, very grateful for that. And I think everyone will have a busy end of the year because there's a lot going on on June 14th. <laughs> Moving on to Monroe County, I know from the School Board Association there's um, significant planning and surveys to determine the challenges that other districts are facing and what where people want to set their goals and work toward next year in terms of planning. So that's all been very positive. And within the steering committee, um, I, there's no additional report. Legislative committee? There wasn't any. Yeah. Labor relations. No meeting this oh, week. Set. Yeah. Information exchange, the same week ended as well. Moving on to the standing district committees. Audit we heard from, policy. I mean, we're, just, we're continuing to look through our manual. We've divvied it up, and the ones that pertain to the board specifically that need a little bit of our personalization, we are working on between this month and maybe next month to try to fine tune that so that come August, we can start approving them by section, reading them and then approving them yeah. by section, I should say. Our, our goal is to have it all approved by May. Yes. The entire manual, so Ooh. it'll be working. That's an process. awesome goal. Yeah. <laughs> Budget advisory, I know we um, all participated in different ways, but appreciate that Brian thought differently about how to engage the community and that thought exchange was so successful. So. Um, that worked well in strategic planning. We look forward to next week and our workshop where we see the survey results and we'll be able to use that information to further plan and look forward for board goals. Moving on to school community committees. Um, I don't think there's anything. Okay, same, we're wrapping things up. Moving on to the consent agenda. Everyone's had a chance to review all those items. Can we have a motion, please, to accept the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Linda, second by Jen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <coughs> and moving on to visitor speaking time, we do have um, a student who wishes to address the board this evening. Um, I'll briefly read the policy as we do every meeting. Um, the board invites the, com the public to comment on matters regarding the school district, and students may also openly express themselves directly to the board. The comment section of the meeting is a time for the Board of Education to listen. Board of meetings are held in public and are the sole opportunity to conduct the business of the district. Meetings are not an opportunity to engage in dialogue and are not public forums. Persons wishing to address the board do so by registering with the district clerk it is imperative that speakers address the board in a civil manner, refrain from discussing specific personnel or students, limit outbursts and unnecessary noise. <coughs> Comments naming specific personnel should be addressed privately or in writing to the board to protect individuals' rights. Matters that would infringe upon student privacy will not be addressed in this public forum. We encourage an atmosphere of respect and tolerance and strict adherence to the district's code of conduct. The board also <clears throat> encourages speakers to continue conversations through other means, including phone calls and follow-up meetings, <clears throat> to further address questions or concerns. 
The board encourages parents and community members to become involved and informed, utilizing proper channels of communication to do so. Because school boards do not manage the daily operation of the district, we encourage you to seek clarity on issues you may have by reaching out to your child's teacher or building administrator. Um, we encourage the positive engagement of all stakeholders. With that, Cindy, would you introduce the speaker this evening? Samantha Valinsky. Welcome. Hi, again. Um, so I am actually working on this, and I was going to be here with someone else today, um, Maya Richards, another senior at Schrader, but unfortunately she, um, she could not make it. She had a band concert um, to go to. But we wanted to talk about the lack of inclusivity towards the LGBTQ plus community in our school and in our district. There are no protections specifically for the LGBTQ plus community in the district code of conduct and many definitions pertaining to the queer community are inaccurate or outdated. To address those um, definitions, they're as followed. First, gender means actual or perceived sexual orientation in a person's gender identity or expression. Second, sexual orientation means actual or perceived heterosexuality, homosexuality, or bisexuality. Sexuality is used interchangeably in these definitions to mean both biological sex and sexuality without any clarification. Gender is your identity, whether it's man, woman, non-binary, gender fluid, or other, and does not necessarily correlate to one's gender expression, sexual orientation, or biological sex. The use of the word perceived in the second definition, which is of sexual orientation, leaves room for the harmful speculation of other sexuality that, happen, that happens in schools and perpetrates negative stereotypes. And while we understand that there are many different sexual orientations, the listing of only heterosexuality, homosexuality, and bisexuality, with no other or et cetera added, implies that those are the only options. These might seem like nitpicky points, but these, it is these types of oversights that demonstrate the overall lack of concern, awareness, and respect for the LGBTQ plus community in our schools. The school atmosphere is not very welcoming for the LGBTQ plus students, and many teens face cyberbullying, verbal harassment, and physical assault simply because of the way they identify. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among young people aged 10 to 24, and the LGBTQ plus youth are, far, are four times more likely to attempt suicide than their straight peers. That's not a coincidence. Bullying from the peers and small microaggressions from teachers pile up, making LGBTQ plus students feel displaced and taking a toll on their mental health. A student body with a fully integrated LGBT Q plus community is more likely to be accepting of its queer peers, providing a basic overview education on the concepts of gender, sexuality, expression, and expression could decrease the amount of ignorance and homophob homophobia that students have to face from peers and adults on a daily basis. In my personal experience, I've noticed the exclusion of the LGBTQ plus community from my history textbooks, English lectures and literature, and health classes. Positive queer influences should be integrated into different aspects of our education rather than erased from it. This year at Schrader, Jeanette Adams Price, a, per, a professional learning leader at Monroe One Boses, came in as a guest speaker for some of the health classes. She spoke about the basics of gender and sexuality. This was a personal effort of a health teacher at Schrader, but as it stands, Webster does not have a policy requiring this to be taught. This is a great first step, but there's more that needs to be done to achieve a fully inclusive, cur inclusive curriculum. Queer students deserve a curriculum that affirms and acknowledges their experience and existence. I know a focus of the board in the Webster Central School District is inclusivity and equity for all of the students and staff. However, I think we've fallen short when it comes to LGBTQ plus health education and education in general. There are students who cannot see themselves in the curriculum being taught. Specifically, the lack of representation in health and sex education has, a negative, has negative impacts and causes great disparities between queer students and their straight peers. According to the CDC, LGBTQ plus students are more likely to struggle with HIV and other STDs, st teen or unplanned pregnancies, sexual violence, and domestic abuse issues. There are very few protections in place for the LGBTQ plus community in schools, and the ones we have are not consistently enforced. In the Code of Conduct, it states that the Dignity Act emphasizes the importance of tolerance and respect for others by students and staff alike, therefore all members of the community. Although we understand and value DASA, it is too broad to provide adequate protection for all students, especially LGBTQ plus students. 
Um, I, sorry. <laughs> Um, this is not, there are many instances of deaths that are Title IX violations or homophobia and transphobia in the district. They're not isolated events that are experienced. And instances like this will continue to happen unless we make changes to educate, support, and protect LGBTQ plus students in our district. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Have a nice evening. Would I just email it to you? Okay. Before we adjourn this evening, um, we need to say a big thank you over there to Paul and Kathy, who have traveled with us all year, despite all our location changes and all the challenges in setting up this equipment, each and every location and meeting that we have. And we greatly appreci appreciate the effort behind all that you do for us. So thank you very much. <laughs> and with that, can we have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Maria. Second, Maria. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. <laughs>